The Andrea Tantero Show. Welcome back to the Andrea Tantero Show. This Labor Day, yes, we're laboring. Not too much, but a little bit. But it's worth it because we have a fantastic guest, Colonel Lee Ellis. He's author of Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton. He's a former POW who has a Bronze Star, a Purple Heart, a POW medal. He's a decorated hero, and he consults businesses and employees on work now. And I'm guessing that your leadership ability was honed in the military, probably the best place, Colonel, where one could get such skills. Would you agree? Well, I think so, because there is such a focus on leadership. You're leading under the most difficult circumstances, and you never know what's going to come up, but you still have to motivate, inspire people to take on very difficult assignments. So I think uh, the military does focus on it heavily because we know it's so important. And that what the leader does or doesn't do, the decisions they make or they don't make, and the example they set is so crucial to success. Now, ironically enough, Colonel, we celebrate Labor Day by taking a day off. Not not you and I, of course, but can you tell us what Labor Day means to you? Sure. Uh, I, like you, always saw it as the end of summer. I did love summer myself and still do. I like hot weather. But uh, I also like the signaling of a change. I'm, I'm a person who enjoys change, so it signals that we're going to shift here to the fall. And, in fact, uh, just recently, the mornings are a little cooler, so it, that's a signal to me that fall yeah. is coming. And that's a beautiful time of the year. Uh, it is also a reminder, though, uh, growing up as a kid on the farm, we worked hard, uh, hard work all the time. And Labor Day, uh, we only we only worked till noon, and we took the afternoon off. <laughs> so uh, we did get some time off on Labor Day. Uh, we did look forward to it as a time to you know have a little picnic or something like that in the afternoon. So as I mentioned, you're an executive coach, and executives uh-huh. have very challenging jobs. It is very challenging leading a team. So how do you coach somebody, and maybe not even an executive colonel, but how do you coach somebody? not to quit when times get tough. You know, more and more studies are coming out showing that people aren't loving what they do. And I think that's because, and we've talked about this on this show, a number of people uh, are in positions that maybe they don't want to be in. A lot of uh, uh, older folks have had to go back to work due to the recession. Um, They just don't have enough money, so they've been forced from their golden years, really, back into the workforce. Uh, The number one employer colonel in the nation is Kelly Services, which is a temp agency. So there's a lot of people out there that may not be in their dream job because their dream job has either been downsized, they lost their dream job, or maybe it doesn't exist. What is your advice to them on how sure. not to quit? Well, I think the first thing is you never quit a job until you have another job. That's rule number one. Mm-hmm. So you don't quit there because you need uh, you need the reserves to carry you over into your transition to your next job, and you need those uh, income to provide for your family and to pay your bills and that sort of thing. So you don't quit. Uh, you always try to be the very best that you can be at whatever you're doing. You know, I, I read a book when I was uh, – I did not read many books as a kid, I'll be honest with you. I love to read now. I read many, many books. But growing up, I was just probably too ADD to read very long. But I read one about uh, – uh, the found one of the founders of the uh, all black college in Virginia there, and how he went to try to get into school, and they asked him to ha- to hang around and wait. And while he was waiting, he got the broom and swept out the office just to do something and to demonstrate his work ethic. He got into school, and now he's one of the most famous leaders we've ever had in this country. But that dem- that put in my heart the, dis- the knowledge that whatever I did, I need to really do it well whether I like doing it or not. And I've done some dirty jobs, you know. I worked in poultry plants growing up. I did anything, you know, I could to make money to go to school. So I've done the dirty jobs. But the thing that I want people to understand is you've got to go with your passion. As soon as you can, start preparing to go with what you're really interested in, what you're passionate about. And that is going to make a difference because you'll have the emotional energy to drive forward and not quit and things that would make normally make a normal person quit, uh, like me going through flight school or even as a prisoner of war for five and a half years, I was where I needed to be. I was a fighter pilot. I was a military guy. And the guys who were there with me were the same way. They were passionate about being uh, military leaders, military officers, fighter pilots, warriors. 
and so we didn't, the word quit wasn't in us. Mm-hmm. And I think that's true for anybody. You see people who, I know, I have a friend who's a plumber. He loves being a plumber. You know, a lot of us wouldn't want to be a plumber, but he pumps out septic tanks and all sorts of stuff, and he loves it, and he's good at it. And I'm proud that we have people like that on Labor Day. You know, so, Colonel uh, Colonel Ellis, sometimes just talking about politics every day on this show, I feel like a bit of a plumber. Talking about Washington, uh-huh. D.C., it seems like I'm unclogging <laughs> all these drains yeah. caught up with you-know-what from, from politicians on the left yeah. and and oftentimes on the right. But I'm glad you mentioned your bio a little bit, and I just I want to get off asking you advice for just one second because I do want to touch upon one thing you said. Uh, you served as an Air Force fighter pilot flying 53 combat missions over North Vietnam. And I know in 1967 you were shot down. You mentioned you were held as a prisoner of war for more than five years uh, in Hanoi and surrounding camps. You've got two silver stars, the Legion of Merit, the Bronze Star, um, the, a Purple Heart, a POW medal. What kept you going, Colonel, personally? Yeah, I think, first of all, uh, my faith. I believe that uh, God had a role for me in life and that he cared about me and so my job was to stay alive and do my part so that was a strong part of it and i knew people back home were praying about me and thinking about me and the american american government was not going to leave me there forever so i had faith that someday i was going to walk out of there secondly uh as i said a minute ago i really believed that i knew myself pretty well in many areas, uh, not in every area, but in many areas that having to do with your profession, your passion about what you want to do, and your personality, I was a really good fit. And then thirdly, we had great leadership. And leadership always makes the difference. And our leaders, uh, they were servant leaders. And on Labor Day, integrating this idea of Labor Day back in, our leaders, uh, they took care of their people. And when you're a leader who takes care of people, you know, uh, the issues that started Labor Day, which were union versus management issues in, in the late 1890s, or in the 1890s, that's when Labor Day came up with the Pullman strike. So, But if you're taking care of your people so they know you care about them and you believe in them, uh, that's what we had for leaders in the POW camps, and that made all the difference. They took torture time and time again. They went first into the torture sessions. Uh, and most often, and some most of them were in solitary confinement. They're very senior leaders for more than four years. Mm. And, I, and I'm not I'm not comparing the two, but taking care of your people, taking care of your team, it's a mm-hmm. theme, Colonel, that you could apply to the family as well. And this Labor Day, uh, you know, I think we have an economic crisis in this country. Jobs. Uh, and the job market isn't where it should be. And as I mentioned, people aren't loving their work. But also, I think there's a crisis in the home, Colonel. And and I do think that people quit uh, on their families and their kids perhaps all too often. And, you know, earlier this uh, last week, um, and I explained this on the show, you know, I, I lost my younger brother who has special needs. Um, and uh, one thing I learned from him was devotion to family and not quitting on your family. And that was also a lesson I learned from my my father. He came here from uh, Greece when he was very young, 18 years old, after working on uh, a merchant marine ship that used to fill up in the in the Gulf with oil, and it would deliver the oil all around the world. And that was really the only area of economic opportunity for, for young Greek men at the time. My dad saw the road Greece was going down. He said, I got to get out of here. He eventually landed in the United States and worked very hard. I mean, he didn't get a day off. He actually was homeless. He slept in the basement of a restaurant um, next to the boiler room. And that's where he met my mom, who was home from Syracuse University on spring break. And she just saw his work ethic and how determined he was and what a kind heart he had and his loyalty and his commitment. She also said he was very cute and looked like Elvis. Um, But they really really clicked, and they started a team, and they, they built restaurants and went on to do more real estate and that type of things. But they pushed all of their kids to work. And my dad never quit on his family either. And never did my mom. She didn't quit on us kids. Before we go to commercial break, any thoughts, Colonel, on the importance of not just quitting at your job, but not just quitting on things at home when times get tough and things get hard? You know, Andrea, it's amazing you bring this up because I went for a run this morning. I had a 30-minute run just before the call here. I had time to get my shower. But the thing that was on my mind was not quitting on your family. Uh, 
we all have uh, children who are family members who are problematic at times and not quitting, being there. You know, God never quits on us and that unconditional love of family. We need to have that commitment that we never give up on them. doesn't mean we aren't tough on them. Uh, we have to have boundaries and firmness, but uh, we're there for them, and they know that we're still there for them. We care about them, and we're going to walk that hard road, as you did with your brother, and as my brother does with his son. Uh, it's, it's tough, but you walk in that road, and you're committed to it, and that's what family does. Yeah, that's that's excellent advice, excellent advice. And it really, the feeling of knowing that devotion um, and the, and knowing that they taught you that lesson, I think, is just a huge gift. It's it's a really big gift, that, that gift of love. That is the greatest gift that they can give. Colonel Lee Ellis, founder and president of Leadership Freedom, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to ask the colonel how the military does it. And we're also going to talk about not just the meaning of Labor Day, but a recent study that shows that the culture in Washington is disincentivizing us to work. So are we going to become a nation of lazy Europeans? I'll ask the question, and I'll ask the colonel when we come back. Welcome back to the Andrea Tantero Show. This Labor Day, yes, we're laboring not too much, but a little bit, but it's worth it. Because we have a fantastic guest, Colonel Lee Ellis. He's author of Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton. And he consults businesses and employees on work now and how to be successful and give pointers. Because let's be honest, the people with the best leadership skills in this country are our military. And many of our military are coming back from serving our country so that we can have our freedoms. And they deserve jobs. They deserve work. They make the best employees. Because it's hard work. They are under real duress, especially now and over the last couple of decades, really, fighting for our freedom every day. Colonel Lee Ellis, thanks for staying with me for another block. You know, how does the military do it, Colonel? You know, boot camp, I've seen some of the footage from boot camp. I can't even really imagine. I mean, I go to the gym and I think I work really hard, but this must be the gym times 100. Um, And then just the mental discipline of not just being out there for days and weeks sometimes without talking to your family, but not seeing your children, uh, maybe not getting a warm meal to eat. Uh, I don't know if boot camp's the easy part, Colonel, but you're out there, you're fighting, you're, you haven't showered in a while. You know, how do people get through it? What do you think it takes to be a part of the U.S. military? I think it takes, like most anything else, it takes commitment right up front. You have to be committed to what you're doing. You have to somehow make a decision you believe in it in today's forces you know it's all volunteers so someone has made a decision there to join i think the you mentioning boot camp and the hardship there part of that is to break the mindset that the typical person has that you know i'm the center of the universe and uh, i'm the, i'm the biggest toughest guy around and i'm the center of the universe well they break that down so you start to think about others and team because that really is the foundation for leadership it's accomplishing the mission, but it's also taking care of the people. In the in civilian world, we talk about getting results, but also building relationships with your people, and you have to do both as a leader. Uh, and most of us are not are not geared and built out uh, in our personalities to do both, so we have to learn to do one or the other. But as far as the uh, the not quitting and making it through, you know, I think it's just like. Uh, if you're a lawyer and you're defending somebody in court, you're really committed to them and you don't quit uh, because, you know, you take a take a hit one day in the trial. You know, you bounce mm-hmm. back and you're ready there the next day. Or if you're working on the assembly line and you take a hit one day, you make a mistake or you're not feeling so well, you know, you're going to do what you can to do your job because others are depending on you. And that's a big part of it. As you know, others are depending on you. So the military, of course, Ultimately, it's a life and death profession, and so that drives, makes everything we do probably much more serious than it would be, you know, if you're working in General Mills or, or, or General Motors, if you're working for the General, it's a little bit, it's a different situation because it is more life and death, and we take things more seriously. But the leadership, the basics of leadership in the military is three foundational things. First is character. Your word has to be your bond. You have to do what you'll say. You lead by example. And uh, when you don't, you really undermine your leadership and trust, which is uh, foundational to leadership. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you have to accomplish the mission. 
Because if you don't accomplish the mission, then you didn't do what your job is really all about. Or if in business, you have to get results. You have to make a profit or you have to make a product. You have to do something. But you also have to take care of the people. And, you know, right now, we have Labor Day because the issue of mission and people got out of balance. And what, as a leader, I try to help other leaders in the marketplace understand that you have to take care of your people. You have to hold them accountable, but you also have to take care of them because everybody coming to work wants to feel like they count for something. They're valued. They're special. They're, they're, they want to see how they're contributing because they want a purpose in life above just uh, feeding themselves and their family. That's the basics. But once you get past that, they want to feel like that they're living for something, and that's so important. So to, to summarize there, character, your word is your bond. Keep your word. Number two, finish the project to completion. Do not quit on the project or your people. And three, really build your people. Build people up. What are some tips besides those two, Colonel, that you can offer people in the workforce now to be a better worker this Labor Day or a better employee? I think to be a better employee, it's uh, to be accountable and be responsible. Take ownership. If you take ownership, people, your boss is going to be He's going to be excited about you. If you take ownership and totally responsible, like I hand this over to you, I know that you're trained to do it now. Okay, I'm not going to give you something that you're not trained for yet. I may need to develop you a little bit and train you. But once you get there, I'm there to be willing to turn over ownership. It is great advice. And uh, earlier, if you missed the first uh, part of the interview with the with the colonel, he said, pick something you love. Because uh, if, you, if you love it, it doesn't feel like work. That's what my dad used to say to me. Andrea, do something you love. It won't feel like work. And you know what, Colonel? I do because I get to interview people like you. Colonel Lee Ellis, author of Leading with Honor and president of Leadership Freedom, which consults Fortune 500 companies. Sir, it has been an honor this Labor Day. Thank you so much.